Hi, this is Happy Bird from HappyBirdsCraftingHaven.com and today I was kind of messing around making little charms out of miniature tea sets and I wasn't originally going to turn this into a tutorial but I was sitting here and I thought, oh what the heck, I'll go ahead and record this. Um, <clears throat> what I did was I purchased a little miniature tea set from eBay. I just typed in the words miniature tea sets and page after page of them popped up. This tea set was sold by a Chinese seller for $3.88 and it was free shipping. It took about three weeks to get here. Um, I looked for a pattern on the plates that had um, a design around the, the rim of the plate. That was important to me because I knew I was going to be gluing teacups on like this and I wanted to make sure it had a design on the edges. Um, I did see a couple with just like a rose in the center. That wouldn't have done much good because once I glued the teacup on there of course the rose would be covered and the outside would just be white so that's why I went for um, a pattern around the edges and I also looked at the teacup to see what kind of pattern there was on this too. So, um, it did come with, of course, the um, teapot, and I glued the lid on here with E6000, and a little creamer, and a little sugar um, pot. However, I'm not going to be using these as charms. I'm going to be saving these. Um, I was thinking of maybe making a little trinket box with real pretty pink roses, on it and maybe I could glue this onto the trinket box with E6000 or something like that. That might be cute. So I'm just going to save these right here. I'm going to set these aside. Um, I purchased these very tiny and very um, thin earring bales. The earring bales, if you look closely, it has the eye or the loop facing you, the front. Okay, the in, the pendant bales, they are set from side to side. Okay, but the reason why I'm using these earring bales for pendants, and I'm just going to add a jump ring at the top, is because I needed something tiny and I needed something very thin. Now, they do sell these earring bales at Michael's, but if you turn it to the side, you can see it's really kind of thick. And we don't need thick. We need thin to glue onto the plate like that. And the E6000 will really hold. Um, my recommendation would be to allow this to dry overnight. I think it's very important because the E6000 needs time to cure. And you want to make sure it's, it's on there well. Now I used the little E6000 tubes and because um, I feel like I have better control over it. I'm just going to squeeze a little out, put it on here, and I'm going to take a plate and decide where I want this. I'm going to put one at the top for hanging, one at the bottom also to hang a charm. So I like the floral at the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to put this on with my reverse tweezers. Make sure, turn it to the front, make sure it's on there. How I like it. And you can use a regular pair of tweezers if you don't have reverse tweezers, that's fine. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the top. Or the, yeah, I mean the bottom. Okay, I was better off placing that one with my fingers. Okay. Make it like that. Because so now we're going to allow this to dry. Very, very important. Okay. And this other little one is drawing as well right here. There we go. I 
think so. Now these come four in a package. They have these little like needle nose um, uh, nozzles that you can twist on and then use that for accuracy like a pinpoint nozzle. I don't care for those though. I don't use them because once um, you use them they're not any good anymore. So you have to use the whole tube or it's not any good. So I don't put those on. I just I just use the tubes as is. Okay. So um, this one is already dry. Now once these are, th are thoroughly dry overnight you're going to come in with your little teacup put it a fairly good amount of E6000 on the back and you're going to glue it like this and then let this sit overnight as well. Very important that drying time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little oh I forgot to tell you I purchased these bales from a gal on Etsy and they were 250 for 25 of them and she had a sets of 50 and sets of 100 too um, and I, I the name of the company I think is Firebug Designs but I'll double check that and leave a link on my blog if you're interested okay so I'm going to take the one inch head pin and I'm going to take a little tiny bead slide it through then I'm going to take a check bead this check bead um, the color is watermelon and then I'm going to take a little bead cap slide that on and if you don't want to make your own charms you can purchase um, charms at stores like Michaels they usually have them you know eight to a card you can use those instead okay so I'm just bending this here at the top like so then I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers about here and I'm going to bend it but not all the way I'm going to leave this loop open right here so I can hook this onto the bottom and I'm going to come back in and finish closing it all of the way and I'm going to straighten it okay. there we go You can fiddle with it and adjust it if you want, like I'm doing. This wasn't a perfect circle. There we go. It's a little better. Okay, like this. All right, so I have these um, in couple of different sizes. I use the dinner plate with the teacup here and I use the regular teacup saucer with this one here. I thought about turning these into earrings but I decided not to because I put them on wires, ear, ear wires, and they, um, the teacup, it, it kind of like, I, I don't know how to describe it, just didn't hang particularly right, but they'll hang fine on a necklace. Wouldn't this be a cute idea to surprise your favorite waitress? Put this in a little box to give to her at Christmas time or, or just to let her know that you appreciate her. See, I'm, this is a heavy gauge oval pendant and um, I purchased these on Etsy and these were made specifically for pendants so they wouldn't 
um, you know, open up so you'd lose the pendant. Yeah, see, so, you now this hangs very nicely. And this is just a little chain that I also purchased. Actually, a set of them, and I gave all that info in um, my Bermuda heart, my Bermuda blue crystal heart necklace that I made. These were very inexpensive. These were not expensive to make at all. I think they turned out really cute. Okay, so this is This is the necklace on this. Isn't that cute? Huh? And I, I like the watermelon color. To me, it just reminds me of something just very kind of antique-ish looking. Or shabby chic looking. And these are for the smaller ones, for the gals who like their necklaces maybe a little smaller. So I hope you enjoyed this um, kind of a mini tutorial, I guess you'd call it. And um, give this a try. I, I think you'll really enjoy this. And these might even make really good sellers at uh, craft fairs or fundraisers. I haven't tried it yet. But if you do, let me know, okay? You take care, and God bless each and every one of you. Bye-bye.